My name is Paul Westlake. I'm an architect with Westlake Reed, and I'm privileged to be a guest of Penn State University for whom we're developing a master plan. Um, I'm usually satisfied by the performance experience, but disappointed in the social aspects of the event, I, which I always feel is more like a Presbyterian church service than a, uh, than a performing arts event. But um, I, I think we've heard a lot of these themes today, and I really thank the presenters for the education they've given me. Um, talk a little bit about the conversion of a 1,400-seat pre-depression movie palace um, to a 500-seat theater. And I, see, I think you see some um, intentions um, in these drawings to dissolve the boundary between the audience and the actors and dissolve the boundary bet between the social experience of the lobby and the audience chamber and the performance. You can note here um, also a bar in the audience chamber. <laughs> and to just generally break down the formality. But um, if you see the plan, we <clears throat> combined um, the, the audience chamber with the lobby. And, and we also put at the rear of the theater um, lounges. We took the worst seats we, and we put loose seating in there and, we, and a bar there which has sight lines to the stage. There are about 60 seats um, in those. And there's a hydraulic stage which is a thrust, but it also has a proscenium. Um, I believe in very steep rakes of audience chambers. I think most are far too shallow, and I think that's really critical. But the idea was um, to have the flexibility to play, obviously, bo both as um, uh, you know, thrust and uh, proscenium. But um, I also think a thing that we miss a lot is that we, we talk about how audiences relate to actors, but we don't talk about how audiences relate to audiences. And I think you can see when we uh, designed the balcony, we, we tried to get their arrival point of sight to be two to three rows from the stage so that the audience is actually visualizing the emotions and the reaction of the, audi of the other audience members. And a very tight wrap of the, um, of the audience around the stage and quite a variety of uh, seating here. You can see how the seating really envelops this thrust, um, which is also convertible to additional seating. And you can see the um, lounges um, in the rear of this audience chamber and the bar. And uh, they have, a, a, what's uh, good about this, you, they open the theater at about seven. You can witness the fight calls. Um, they really never close the curtain. Um, those tickets are typically about $15. Um, they're, they're not assigned, so it's kind of first come, first served in terms of seats. So people take the seats at the bar first, then they go to the lounges. So the party starts at the back of the audience chamber. So when everybody comes in, they're kind of greeted by a social experience. And then the actors and actresses are invited to go back to the lounge spaces at the, um, after the performance and hang out. Um, at, uh, this is a facility um, that combines, it's at Playhouse Square in Cleveland. It combines arts education for the second largest performing arts center with uh, the local affiliates of National Public Radio and National Public Television. We were planning both facilities and neither could afford it, so we put them together. But the great, this is, so I think it's a story about partnerships. The great virtue is you have flexible spaces that serve everything. And um, they host 250,000 school children here a year. It's the largest provider of distance learning in the state. But everything is mediated. Every single space has, um, the capability of broadcast. And so they capture all the content and then they interpret that and they play that to the community. And so we think of these spaces more as white boxes. I mean, there is a black box, which we showed you previously, which had uh, retractable seating and so on. All of the spaces are transparent, either from the internal circulation or they're arranged on the busiest street in town so you can see the activity. Um, we're working in, um, a very diverse community in Florida, um, mostly Caribbean, West African roots. And so the spirit of that um, reflects the cultural heritage. But the Arts Center you know, reflects a bit of an attitude we have, which is that we, don't, we also don't like to separate the patrons in a social experience. So we combine the ba balcony and the orchestra patrons in one space, which can also be an event space connected to the outside and have an infrastructure that also allows for performances. Um, but we also um, have media for projection to the exterior of this that also faces the entrance to the cricket stadium. And they actually can carry performances outside and sometimes they can 
ticket events as well to overflow crowds. Um, similar um, thing that we're doing in um, Lone Tree, all patrons flow to a single lobby space. What we're trying to do is get the patrons from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. rather than 7.45 p.m. to 10.15. But the lobby is um, animated with uh, projection. It really plays to the neighborhood beyond. It connects to a multi-purpose room, which also can be open to an amphitheater and therefore become a stage, so that this can be combined with the lobby or it can, can be combined with the outside. And at Penn State, um, uh, we are developing an expanded lobby and another studio. Um, and the idea of that is to really uh, broadcast the arts to the campus and create a social spaces so that um, we, can, we can actually draw people into the facility, which was previously closed. It also has a variable enclosure, and I think one of the ideas was to be able to connect the stage to a plaza and, and allow various forms of interpretation so it would become a destination on the campus. And then um, at the Allen Theater in Playhouse Square, which is for the Cleveland Playhouse, um, we have, and simpler than the Wiley, um, the, the seating is designed with trays that are four seats wide, six seats deep, and two people can move them and rearrange this in about any configuration within 45 minutes. Really no hydraulic machinery, no mechanization, very simple. You don't need stage hands to do it. So we can see it in a number of different forms here. Um, and then finally, um, I think, uh, you know, in a, in a kind of a beat up Milltown, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, their new art center, which is across from the great icon of the Bethlehem steel mill, to look at, you know, the kind of environment of this, the introduction of uh, iconography of local artists, uh, the use of technology, for, which is typically on the stage, which is brought into the audience chamber and even illuminating the mill, and then, you know, just you know, create an environment which um, is a place for intellectual loitering and really becomes kind of a cultural YMCA in the community. That's it.